up buying like a Twizzler or something for the for the plane ride. Not that, but you know, something, some snack, some combo, you know, some pizza, pizza flavored combos with, with ranch. Mmm, now that is hot stuff. And it's episode 104 of Radio Free and Smith. This week, uh, let's say, you know, you're a metalhead, you hear somebody running around saying Eco Eco Azarak. Yogg's at Thoth and whatnot. Normally, you'd think it'd be out of something like this. Sorry if I uh, scared anybody with that. I know that that kind of death metal can be pretty spooky if you're big into the uh, logos. But running around saying Eco Eco Azarak isn't just for death metal bands anymore. In fact, I want to say they might have been the first band to do that sort of thing. Maybe, maybe Black Widow or Coven or something did that back in the 80s. Or the 80s, I mean like the 60s and the 70s. I don't fucking know. I don't remember. Those guys are kind of boring. But uh, there was this really cool band from Great Britain called Cloven Hoof. And look at that. We have weird spooky ritual magic. Right in the beginning of the first song and the first album. Wow. It happens maybe three or four minutes in. These are pretty long songs, actually. I would almost compare them to a British counterpart to Merciful Fate, only the vocals aren't as wacky, they're more of a bellow. But we still have these very spooky sounding riffs and demonic incantations, very hammer horror esque, uh, delightfully evil guitar riffs. <laughs> Watch out, you might get spooked, it's been known to happen. And overall, a strong anthemic feel with uh, riffs that are percussive and epic, but also melodic and harmonized. I told you they were spooky. They're like blowing out black candles and shit. Gotta watch out for that. These guys were in fact so occultic and dark that they didn't even play under their real names. They just called themselves Water, Air, Fire, and Earth. Which, uh, if you were to tell people that was the names of your band pseudonyms today, they might think you sound like this. Uh, get with it! But no, it's all spooky elemental magic type shit. And I think these guys, though they might not be as well known as they should be given the quality of the music they made, they are probably an influence on early black metal stuff. For instance, you got your old uh, Bathory style riffs that sounded like this on uh, Under the Sign of the Black Mark. Remember this? These kind of trudging, marching melodies utilizing a lot of bar chords and uh, spooky bell samples and general darkness. This album came out in 1986, I want to say. 1984, you get some uh, woven hoof stuff that, while not as extreme, sounded very similar in spirit. See, same kind of a spooky, mid-paced melodic riff. Very unusual for the time. It's doomy, but it's not Black Sabbathy at all. It's kind of its own unique thing. I really like the vocals on this album. This song kind of has a Lovecraftian feel to it in the lyrics. But yes, very much an influence on Bathory, I would say, as well as Dark Throne. I think Fenrir's just shouted them out at least once. Check this part out. Those little melodic fills in between the percussive notes give me a hefty Argus slant vibe. They're definitely into their old school, uh, not very well known heavy metal stuff. Let's see what happens later in the song. Oh, yeah, now we got spooky male choirs over harmonized, high pitched leads. If that doesn't sound like the old Swedish melodic black metal. I don't know what it does. But like I said, this is 1984, so major aesthetic innovators, these guys. In addition to writing very long and complex songs with interesting twists and turns, like... This kind of weird marching outro. 
utilizing a lot of negative space. Effective way to end the album there. The classic, uh, what do they call it, the eight-minute Judas Priest ending where everybody just kind of slams on their instruments. Normally it's kind of cheesy. It worked for that song, I think. Elsewhere on the album, they, uh, they've they got the, the big, long, melodic epics, and they have some more hard rock-influenced songs. This one's called Laying Down the Law, and it's about street fighting and uh, beating people up, robbing banks and shit. Good stuff. Probably the best of the hard rock songs on this album. He has a really good voice for it, very uh, tough sounding, not really the kind of ball pinching falsetto you would expect from a lot of the more melodic uh, new wave of British heavy metal bands, which gives them a rougher edge. I like when he just kind of shouts at the audience too, sort of moves the narrative of the song along with this uh, vagabond outlaw terrorizing the urban populace. This chorus is so good. Very barroom sing-along type shit. Surprisingly, it was actually their hard rock songs that might have gotten this band in trouble a little bit. I don't know if it actually generated too much controversy, but there was a thrashier number on this album called Night Stalker. It came out in 1984, and... It's about, you know, a night stalker, a guy, you know, busting into people's houses and killing them in the middle of the night for Satan. And uh, that happened to come out right around, like, right before the uh, Richard Ramirez shit got blown wide open. So uh, the main guy behind the band, Air, or his uh, real name, Lee Payne, as he started going by, dramatically switched concepts for the uh, belated follow-up to this album. He dropped a lot of the uh, the occultism. It's actually an entirely new lineup. Most of it is guys from uh, Tredegar, who are a Welsh band, but he went more into science fiction, and he upped the uh, prog rock influences. But specifically in an interview in the uh, liner notes of the reissue of their third album, he mentions that this change was mostly caused by his uh, adverse reaction to the Night Stalker murders, very eerily emulating the example of the protagonist of the Night Stalker song. Now, Steve Round's guitars and David Potter's vocals are maybe my favorite aspect of the early Cloven Hoof stuff, so the fact that it's a completely new band now, they've been replaced by uh, Andy Wood on guitars and Russ North on vocals. You'd be right to be suspicious if you enjoyed that album. It seems like the core of the band is gone. Would you believe that with an entirely new lineup and a vastly different sound, they put out another metal masterpiece? This whole thing is a science fiction cyberpunk concept album about genetic engineering and spaceships and shit blowing up. And it's as good as that uh, dank fucking album cover would make you think it'd be. And you can hear the prog rock influences with the wacky tempo change they just did. There's also a heftier element of uh, instrumental layering. The production on this album is somewhat flawed, but there is good instrumental separation, so they got that going for them. And these very epic, long songs with lots of melodies. And now you can see, not only did they help invent occult, spooky black metal, but this kind of stuff is actually a very early example of what would become modern power metal, so innovating in two genres, two very different styles, and they pulled both of them off with a plum. Those are Ruth Norse new vocals. And they are very clean, whereas uh, David Potter's were very dirty and nasty. And I like them just as much for different reasons. Very, uh, almost kind of queenish. Certainly fitting of the uh, more melodic sound they have going. Very nice choruses. Let's see where this song goes later on. Uh, miss with the fast forward machine, if you'd please. Wow. Jeez, I think we need to recalibrate that thing. But here's a nice uh, slowdown march part. Kind of like the end of that uh, early Clovenhoof song. 
So you'd think, oh, the song's wrapping up here. Not so much. In true progressive rock fashion, it turns into a whole nother mini song. Once we get out of this uh, harmonized space death Gundam march. Maybe the production of this album isn't this bad. I don't know. A lot of people complain about it. I kind of like it. Now we're talking, yeah! Oh, it's so good. Well, yeah, all these songs have really epic, just weird sections where the song completely turns around, goes inside out, and turns into something new. Which is fitting, because it's an album about uh, spooky genetic engineering cyberpunk shenanigans. And then finally, we get to possibly the uh, crowning Cloven Hoof achievement in 1989, the absolutely impeccable early power metal masterpiece, A Sultan's Ransom. Described by a 1989 Metal Hammer review as... <laughs> a foaming flagon of astrophysical metal that flies on wings of steel. <laughs> this one's got lots of uh, keyboards and sparkly guitar harmonies that remind me a bit of a uh, Crimson Glory, a similarly epic early power metal band from the United States. Also, a hefty amount of. Uh, and speed metal influence. And overall, just a very well produced, tightly wound package of absolute metal glory. Some people might call it cheesy, these people have no soul. This one's the second song on the album, it's called Forgotten Heroes. It's about World War I. All the songs on this album, they're about history, mythology, Spooky shit, magic, and mystery. Check out this chorus. Right? That is, in fact, that good shit, my brother. And if you do not like it, I don't know what to tell you. This is basically the best of this particular genre. This final 80s Cloven Hoof album. Then they went on hiatus for a very long time. They're actually back around now. They're putting out new albums. Well, Lee Payne is. He's gotten another entirely new lineup. There's all kinds of wacky stories about prior reunions. Supposedly, the vocalist was um, somewhat schnackered and provided a poor performance at some Keep It True festival. And then he claims that he was drugged during it, and that's why that happened. But that uh, killed another reunion version of the band and eventually he just got an entirely new group of people this Lee Payne character apparently the new stuff is good I haven't dug into it too deeply yet but actually a lot of these uh, reunited new wave of British heavy metal bands have a pretty impressive track record for putting out stuff that matches up to their 80s things so if you've heard later Cloven Hoof and you liked it let me know because I'm probably gonna go check that shit out I mean all the new Satan and Angel Witch albums have been really fucking good Cloven Hoof all together uh, their early incarnation of the band was around in the early 80s, and they were putting out very long, complex songs. And normally when you think of uh, 1984, and you think of long, complex, new wave of British heavy metal songs, you think of, uh, what, Iron Maiden, Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, you know, uh, Clovenhoof, somewhat comparable to that, but they're a little bit less... And instead, a little bit more. Hail Satan! Hail Satan! Satan is his father! Which is right up your boy's alley. And then, they went through some trials and tribulations in the late 80s, reinvented themselves entirely with a completely new style as a top-flight early power metal band. So obviously, highly recommended by me. And I will, and I see, will you see you guys around, around next, next time. Next, next, next. Yeah, yeah, I never eat things like that.